Hey guys, it's Katie. Um, today we're going to do, again, another trial cane, but a cane based off the cane I did the other day. So I was trying to make, not really lace, but something kind of dainty and elegant. And this is what I came up with here. This background part here. This is just a bunch of my end canes I kind of put on just to see what I was getting. Um, and I want this to be slightly different. So... I did two tries of this. First I did the sausages rolled out on size three with the white around it rolled out on size three. And then I did one where the white covering the translucent sausages was rolled out on a size, I think I did five. And that still wasn't a thin enough layer of white. So today we're gonna modify. And I figured I'd show it to you that way. If you wanna do something like this, you can. So first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to use my extruder and rather than roll out sausages you totally can um, if you have an extruder why not so I'm going to put a, um, a little log of translucent in there and I'm using Primo white translucent just because I only buy white translucent as I've said in other tutorials um, so just a little log of it and set it in your extruder I'll just cut that off because that's probably enough right there and the tip I'm going to be using that came with my extruder is my largest circle. And that way we'll get circles. So um, on this one here, my cane was three wide by three high. So it was um, nine, cane, nine circles total. And this one I'm probably only going to do six. I don't know. We'll see how much comes out of this log. Um, so let's extrude a bunch of this translucent and this will give you nice uniform circles that little chip I just used was also my ends so they're not as perfect but that's a good way to use your end canes if you're making canes for a specific project and you kind of want to see how they look when they bake up just get a little bit of scrap clay roll it out and put your canes on your end canes on it to test it and see what it'll look like when it bakes because as you guys know a lot of them <clears throat> look different when they're baked compared to when they're raw. So I did one here too. A couple of these haven't baked. This one hasn't baked. But some of these have already baked and that way I could see what they look like. Okay, let me see how many I'll get out of here. This has got a little wonky on the end. <clears throat> so let's see. If I do two inches, I'll get one two, three, four. We don't want to do that. Do I want to work in little one inch sections? Maybe we'll just do little one inch sections. One inch is kind of small though. Let me, um, I'll cut these in two inches and then I'll just extrude a few more. So I have two inch logs. So I have four right there. I might do nine. I might just keep it as nine. But however many you want. So I'm going to extrude out some more of those. Um, and then I will be back when I'm done that. Okay, so now we have all of these ready to go. I'm going to set those aside. And next we're going to wrap them in a layer of white. Now, the biggest thing... The biggest reason, and I said this on the video the other day, that I'm wrapping it... I didn't make a big log of translucent and then wrap it and then reduce it down into this size is because then I'd get more waste. If I start off smaller and then reduce it, I get less waste. So that's mainly why I'm doing this because I'm, I only have a certain amount of white and translucent left and I don't want to run out. Um, if you want to make a big log of translucent and then wrap it in white and then reduce it down to this skinny size, go for it. This just makes a little more work, but you'll have less waste. Um, so what you're going to do, I'm going to take a layer of white, and this is only rolled out on zero. And because on this one here, I did these size logs, and this was rolled out on number five, I'm going to go down as thin as I possibly can. So I'm thinking, I'm going to do try to do a number eight. I'm going to get this as thin as, as thin as thin as I possibly can. Um, so that way my white's not quite as bold. So we're going to start doing that. So let me roll this down. I 
think I'm gonna have to wrap it one do it once more because it wasn't quite conditioned so it's kind of sticking my pasta machine so let me get out a nice thin setting on number eight there well, so let me tell you what was happening here. Just so you know, and if this happens to you, you can deal with it. So when I was running the Kato through really thin, it was um, shredding and falling apart in pieces. So I'm going to try um, rolling out Female Professional, because I have some Female, a big block of Female Professional white that I'm going to try and see if that will, will roll down well. I don't have a lot of Primo left, so I'm trying to use up my other ones. Um... I have some coming in the mail, but it's not here yet. So I'm going to condition this female professional and see how thin I can get it rolled out, whether that's a number seven, a number eight. We'll see. But I'm also modifying this look. I'm not just doing this look. I'm going to be adding a layer of translucent. So I'm going to wrap these in a layer of white and then a layer of translucent and then put it together. And I want to see if that will give me what I'm looking for in a design. We'll see. We'll work it out together. Let me get this conditioned, and I will be back when I'm done with that. Okay, I ended up getting the female professional lot to shred on me. Um, it is super hot today, so I'm thinking the Kato is just sticky. And again, it's really hard to condition. So um, I'm using the female pro white, and I don't have a problem baking all these kinds together. Um, I just bake at usually, no matter what kind I'm using, I bake at 275. But I usually use Kato, Cernet, and um, Primal. So because of the Fimo is such a low baking temperature, it's supposed to be 110 degrees Celsius and 230 degrees Fahrenheit. I used uh, the Fimo yesterday. I baked this at 250. I baked everything. Some of this is Primo, some Kano, Kato, some is um, Fimo. And so I baked this at 250 for an hour. And I think there's even some Cernet in this back and I don't seem to have a problem with that. So I have it rolled out of my thinnest setting and I'll use this little piece right now just to show you what I'm gonna do. And again, you can do this in a big log. I just wanted less waste. So just set your little guy on there, trim it to size. Sorry, that was really screechy. I didn't mean that. And then we'll wrap this guy. I want a little crooked there. We'll wrap this guy in the white and we'll wrap them pretty much every single one in the white. Let me get a kind of a decent little edge here. And when I'm recording, I'm only working on this small tile, so it's really hard for me to like show you this big amount. And so wrap it around, give it a little push, and you'll I don't think you can see it, but there will be, you can see it right here lightly. You see this line? When you push, it will show you where to cut so it fits fairly evenly. Like that. Let me zoom out again. And then fit it together. because it's so thin you can just get it to fit together it won't be the end of the world if it's a little bit now if you have a little overlap like I did right here you don't want that so take your blade and gently trim it flush because um, that will show up in the patterning of it and then just a very light roll you don't really need to close this seam I mean uh, smooth this seam off crazy just get it closed and there's one. So I'm going to do the other nine, and then I'll be back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so I now have them wrapped in a layer of white, so that's what we're looking at, right? So if we do a layer of translucent circle, then a layer of white, and then I want to do another layer of translucent. So I'm going to roll out a layer of translucent on this same setting that we used for the white wrap. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to wrap every single one of these in the same thickness we just did in the white in translucent. And yes, it's a, again a little bit tedious to wrap with um, such a thin setting, 
but we'll get a lot less waste at the end. So that's really why I'm using doing it in individual logs because when you reduce, you'll see at the end, you won't get an inch of waste. Um, that's just white and translucent. From all the canes I've been doing recently, I have a bunch of translucent white waste that I just marbled that I'll use for different backings and stuff, but I really don't need much more translucent white. So um, I'm trying to decrease the amount of waste I get. So again, I'm gonna wrap each one of these. I use an Atlas 150 and zero is my thickest setting, nine is my thinnest, and this is a seven. So I'm gonna roll out a layer of translucent on a setting seven and wrap all nine again. And I will be back when I complete that. You don't need to watch it because it's the same thing. You know, I actually just decided, you know, we're making this on the go and we're making this on the fly. I just decided instead of on a seven, I'm going to make the layer of translucent slightly thicker. I'm going to do a setting six because if you're thinking in your head, we're making a bullseye. We're going to have translucent in the middle and then in the cane, we'll see the white. And then I want another layer of translucent, so I'm going to make it slightly thicker, so I want a setting six, and then we're going to wrap with another layer of white. So you'll only see the white circles, and I want to make sure you can actually see the white and the translucent. I want to make sure there's enough space. So I'm going to run this through on a setting six rather than a setting seven, okay? And we'll see how this turns out. I mean, you're going to see it with me. so. We're learning to do one with you just in case you're struggling with anything. So we have the translucent and the white. We're gonna wrap in this setting six of translucent. I'll just do one of these and then again, I'll finish some more off camera. But for anybody who wants to see. And it is a little finicky working like this, it's just, to reduce a large log, so you could make a large log, okay, have a big translucent, a kind of a setting of uh, a layer of the white, layer of the translucent, and a layer of the white. You could make it big and short and fat, and then reduce it down to these small sizes. But as you know, when you reduce, you lose a lot of clay on the ends. So if you start off at a smaller size, we're going to barely have to reduce to get it down the circle down to that size. So I won't lose as much clay in the reduction process, but yet it's gonna be more of a pain in the butt to wrap all of these. So it's really like, do you have time? Do you enjoy doing this? I don't mind doing this. I have the TV on. I'm watching Cash Cap on GSN. I'm just kind of sitting here chilling out. It's the evening. I don't really have anything else going on. So if you don't mind doing this, do it this way. If you don't care or have enough clay, then do it the other way. Like I said, I'm running low on my clay, so I'm trying to not get as much waste. So then while I'm doing the translucent, I'm just, I have a layer of translucent and then a layer of white, and I'm just going right over to my layer of white and wrapping it at the same moment. And then they're both done. at the same time and then I'm done with these guys. And like I have a little piece missing there, we'll just offer your scraps because you'll get scraps where you when you cut the end, just take a little piece and stick it on. Because again, we're not going to have tons of waste on the end, so we might actually use that piece for a slice. And then I give it just a very gentle roll. And see how, can you see this lump right here? That's an air bubble. So sometimes when you're dealing with settings this then you may get air bubbles. That's totally fine. So just take your blade, slice across the bubble, and push the air out and then just flatten it off. Pretty easy to do. So I have a couple of these already done. This one the end looks goofy, but. So I will continue on doing these. I just wanted to show you. Um, and then I will be back when we're done. 
And we have one more thing to do before we start assembling. Okay, so the next part, we have them all wrapped. The next part we're gonna do, see, so we got a layer of translucent, a translucent log rolled out in my, on my biggest um, extruder circle. Then we have a layer of white rolled out on seven on my Atlas 150, a layer of translucent rolled out on setting six, and a layer of white rolled out on setting seven. So we have nine of those. And the next thing we're gonna do is make little logs of white. So take whatever white you have left, roll it into a log, and we're gonna put this in our extruder. Now, one thing about your extruder, before you put any translucent in it, make sure you clean it, because generally we don't use translucent in our extruder. So you, you want it cleaned fairly well, because you don't want to get color on your translucent if you can help it. So I think yesterday when I made this one, I used this third. So these are all of my circles I get with my extruder. Um, and the circles kind of go in between each crease. So I think today I'm gonna to use this one here. So my second, so this is my smallest, my second smallest. I'm gonna use this size today to, to roll out the white. Um, so I will do that now. I'm just backing my extruder out. And so we're gonna run out a strip of white and then we're gonna cut them in two inch lengths. So let me do that, you don't need to watch it. I wanna to try to keep this video fairly short. Let me do that and then I will be right back and I'll show you what to do with those um, white pieces. Okay, so I have these rolled out and cut into two inch strips and you will need 12 of them. And I just wanna show you one thing. One of my little ones here got a little stuff on it from my extruder, even though I cleaned it well. I'm taking a little bit of 99% alcohol, and yes, you may have to order 99% alcohol on, online, but once you have it, it lasts a long time. If you do anything with alcohol inks, they usually want you to use 99. So just wipe the outside. If it's not like lint and stuff all stuck in it, you usually can just wipe it off fairly well. And in this kind of cane, it will show. So just check your little pieces and it just wiped off like nothing. Okay, so now we'll begin assembling. And we're gonna start off, we're gonna make this a square cane. So we'll start off with three on the bottom. Oh, one little thing, keep your extruder tips in a pill bottle, that works really good. And then we're gonna lay in a little one of these in here, both of these gaps. And then we're gonna put another three on. One, two, three. Piece of excess white there. And we're gonna lay another little bit on. three on top sorry that's my fiance watching his podcast okay and then we're gonna lay these on here Okay, so we have them filled in in all the center gaps, but now we need to fill in the outside gaps. And it is looking like those are a little small, but they'll work. Again, we're just trying this together. I've never, I made one similar, but not with these sizes, so I don't really know how that's gonna work. Oh, there's a little black on that guy. So I'm gonna take my little baby wipe. So I can wipe that off, yep. So we're putting two on these outside ones. We're gonna put two on these ones here. So we're just filling in all the gaps with the white sausages. So you'll need, I don't know if I said it, but 12 white ones. And then we need to 
put two there. And then we'll have them all done. And we can begin reducing. Josh. Really? Okay, just wipe my fingers off, wipe my tile off, and let that dry for a second. Okay, so now we need to reduce this, and this is where I was saying if you make it small already, you'll have a lot less reduction to do, and you'll have a lot less waste. So it's just a tad sticky from that alcohol ink, or that alcohol, so I'm going to blow on it, I'm going to let it dry for a second. And then we'll come back and we'll begin reducing. Okay, so as I showed in that other video, you can reduce squares multiple different ways. An easy way to do it, I'm putting it on parchment, otherwise it'll stick, especially in the summertime. Um, use an acrylic block and just place even pressure. Flip. Acrylic block. Even pressure. This is an easy way to reduce it fairly evenly um, so you don't get one side going faster than another. And the only reason why I'm using parchment is because it's, it's hot out today and it's obviously the clay is sticking to absolutely everything, as many of you are experiencing. So we're just trying to condense all these pieces together and get them to form one solid log with no spaces is our goal. So I'm going to do a little bit with this and then I'll use my roller. You could use your fingers um, and pinch it like a square like a lot of people do. Uh, when it gets a little longer we can pull it and stretch it that way. However you want to do it that's how you need to do it. <laughs> Whatever way you're comfortable with. Flip it every now and then because I'm starting to get one end is skinnier than the other. So because one hand always usually tends to be dominant over the other. And yes, I'm getting little fuzzies on the outside. Again, we can wipe that with some alcohol if that really bothers you. But um, when we cut it, we're cutting it in little slice, thin slices this way so you really won't see any of that. We do one more round like this. So that's one way. Okay. The other way to do it is with your roller. So just take your acrylic roller and gently roll. You never want to do this fast and you never want to do this too hard. Now I'm planning on using this as a background so I don't want to reduce it down really really small. I want to keep it fairly good size. I can always reduce it smaller if I want to use it in a different project. See, mine's getting a little skewed, so I'm going to kind of just pull it back into position. Give it a little pull with my fingers. I'm almost at the size I want. And you see, we, we hardly have any waste because we did all that work with them small. It takes more work, and it takes longer, of course, but you have a lot less waste if you do it that way. And again, that's the only reason why I did it that way. I could have done it, in, like I said, in a large uh, bullseye cane and then reduced them down to small logs and put them together, but we would have had a lot of waste reducing it down and then putting it together and reducing it in this square. So you would have had multiple times of waste. And I've just made in the last few days a bunch of white and translucent canes so I've just gone through most of my white and translucent. I'm just going to roll it just to even it out, not really to reduce it, but just to kind of get rid of my fingerprints. And then we'll slice and we'll see how it looks. Okay, ready? I'm just going to wipe my... try to get less drag. Let's see, let's cut the end and see what it looks like. And like I said, these are great test pieces to use to see what you have. 
So that's the end piece. That's more what I was looking for, something a little more open. That one's got a little opening, but when I cut that I can manipulate that. So that's definitely what I was I was looking for, a little more open than this. And you can always reduce down even smaller. Actually, I'm going to leave that one because that one's got two good sides. I'm going to do this one because it already has some ways. So just by pushing and pulling, we can reduce this down even smaller. And it shouldn't take very long because we've already been working with this clay. And I will be using this in an upcoming project um, tutorial very soon because I have a project in mind. So on this little piece we made a buttercup cane is what I'm calling it. We made a translucent leaf um, on this one, which I didn't put on that one. This is a big one of it. I made a translucent white flower, five petaled flower. I reduced it down a lot smaller than this. We'll use that. These are just some tests I did of things that I want to bake and just see how they look baked. Let's see. It's quite a bit smaller. Let's roll that off just to get all the fingerprints out. And there we go. So here is our finished cane. Pretty neat looking, huh? So that I think will look really cool as a background. That's more what I was looking for. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call it. My bullseye translucent cane maybe. A bullseye translucent and white cane. Something like that. Let me hold it still for my thumbnail image. So if this tutorial was helpful, please like, share, comment. If you have any questions, also post them. Um, you can do this with color. You can add different amounts of layers, different thicknesses. What, however you want to do when you do this, just take it and run. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. So next time we'll probably be working on our full project using the flowers here, the translucent leaf, this also, this flower. So we'll be making a pendant using all of those. So I'll talk to you next time. See ya. Here it is baked. So I took a couple of those end pieces and just laid them on to see how it look. I didn't seam it up endlessly, but or flawlessly, but just laid a couple of these flower ends on there too. And then on this side, this is what you get when you marble the white and the translucent. It's very subtle, but it's good to use for backing because it's not full white and it's not full translucent. Just wanted to see how that would bake up. I'll probably use that for some backs because I have a bunch of it. But anyways, that's what that design will give us.